If you're like most mountain bikers, you probably encountered a feature like this. Something that has you hung up, that you can't get the confidence or practice to give a fair shot. Maybe it's not a drop and instead it's a little move like this to adjust your position on the trail. Or what about flat turns? I know those can be tough to get comfortable on. Whatever it is from flat turns to this step down, we all have improvement we want to make on the trails. But sometimes we can't get out there as often as we may like. Maybe the local trails are closed because they've been drenched in rain for the last week. Or you're out of gas. What if you have work every weekday and this time of year by the time you get off it's too dark to ride? And even though you love your job and you think truing wheels and working on bikes is fun, sometimes you wish you could just turn into the little tin rider and escape to the freedom of the outdoors. Daylight trail riding, fun with friends, drops, jumps, improvement. <laughs> All right, well, even though that intro ended on kind of a weird and a little bit bleak note, all hope is not lost. We may not be able to hit the trails today, but that doesn't mean we can't get a ride in and maybe up our skills a bit while we're at it. Go ahead and grab those bikes because we're going to take this thing to the streets. This first spot consists pretty simply of a stair set and a couple foot loading dock after it. This first move comes with getting up the stairs. This skill easily translates to the trail on everything from small rocks and roots you want to pass over to rock ledges like this that take even a bit more momentum and finesse. The second move in the line is this not so big drop to flat. Now this drop on the trail is considerably bigger than the ledge, but the technique is really the same. The trail drop is definitely bigger, but the body motion I've learned from doing smaller drops like this ledge apply all the same to bigger drops. Yeah, from Oh yeah. This one can honestly be done anywhere, but if you can get it nailed down, it'll open up so many line choices. It's just a combination of a front brake initiated stoppy, pointing the front wheel where you want to go and squaring up your hips to that same direction. Doing it on this hill to square up and then go straight down it really simulates well this section at Chihuahua, where I need to use a nose pick to create enough space for me to roll down this slab smooth. So, actually pretty decent doing it that way. Um, just going from like flat and give it a little turn and having to kind of 90 degree to shoot. But I'm really bad, especially if you're going kind of off an angle and I got to do more of like a, hundred twenty degree angle. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying you're going to really steep switchbacks. It's almost too tight to really just turn through slowly. I'm trying to get nose picks on that. I'm bad. So let's practice that a little bit. This is a harder one, but arguably more useful because there's more applications for it. We can probably all think of the really tight turn or switchback that's made us come to a dead stop or come off our bike. All you need is a small decline. Grass is preferable to me because just in case I get a little over my head, falling won't hurt quite as much. If you can get rolling nose picks on a spot like this, then locking them down on the trail won't be a problem. Oh yeah. I think that's the best one of those I've ever done. Probably looks really lame on there, but you know what? I'm happy with that. <laughs> Yeah, keep her rolling over to this double double stair set. Riding down stairs is a mainstay of most street mountain biking videos. And while I think it's fun and you don't have to look too far to find opportunities, I do try and limit how much I do it. It can just be so hard on your bike, particularly wheels and suspension, to be taking those square edge hits from steps. But this riding definitely can translate to the trail. The ability to remain composed through repeated hits shows up some root sections like this, and gapping from one set to another can help you work on precise natural step downs with not so smooth landings. Or sometimes you might even run into some actual rock steps on the trail. Probably the easiest one to find a setup for 
but also likely the most important is some flat ground cornering. These trees make the perfect set of cones to weave through, and the amount of games you can come up with are limitless. Anytime I ride street, I'm able to focus on the details because I can individualize tasks rather than having to link everything together all at once riding really varied terrain out on the trails. These last couple spots may be a bit harder to find a counterpart to, but they're some of my favorite. This one here is a plain and simple double drop. It of course works on the same technique as the drop before, but it also strengthens my ability to compose myself quickly after the first hit to be ready for the next one. The nice thing about street riding like this is the spots are so easily repeatable and for the most part you don't have to worry about getting in someone else's way or getting ridden over while walking up the wrong way of the trail. It's this easy repetition that's part of why I feel like I improve and learn so much anytime I ride street. We'll finish off with my favorite spot. This step down over the sidewalk is perfectly formed. With a long and forgiving landing and a clear start to the gap, it seems too good not to have been made to be ridden. It also just happens to be great practice for this step down at the forbidden zone. The street spot is considerably slower, so you do need to hop a good bit more, but that almost makes the forbidden zone step down seem easier in comparison, even if it is larger. Confidence is what this video is all about. The repetition and confidence gained from doing different skill builders like this when you don't have time to get out to the trails is huge. I think it's less about knowing what the perfect technique is and all the little details when you're first trying, and more about learning by just doing, and doing it a lot. Learning drops? Start with small curves and landing level off those, and then after that, maybe move it up to some bigger ledges. Cornering? Practice taking that turn on your street faster and smoother. Confidence gained through repetition opens up the ability to step it up. This video was not meant to be a skill guide or a step-by-step -step lesson on how to do these techniques. There are really great professionally trained mountain bike skills coaches and other resources for learning that. But rather my hope is to inspire you that even if you can't get out to the trails, because we all know we have a million different reasons a week why we can't, you can always get a little creative to get a ride in. And while you do it, you can learn real valuable skills that translate to the trails. Most importantly though, remember why you do it. Which unless you're a pro, and likely even if you are, it's because you think bikes are fun. Street riding is fun, learning new skills is fun, and overcoming features out on the trails definitely is fun. Thanks for joining me today guys. I'll see you real soon, and stay shreddy my friends. Oh yeah.